Good to see everyone. Uh, excited to be here. Uh, you know, going back to uh, what would it have been last December, November? Felt like this, this week was a long ways away, and uh, boom, here we are, uh, game week already. So uh, uh, once again, I'd I'd be lying to you if I said I wasn't excited. Trying to take those moments a deep breath. Uh, we have a couple of four. Uh, four more practices we need to get through yet uh, prior to uh, heading down to Minneapolis on Friday. But uh, our kids have had an excellent uh, fall camp. We, we wrapped up kind of our final fall camp practice today. Uh, and uh, looking forward to, to narrowing practice, shortening uh, length a little bit, making sure our kids are uh, back to 100%, making sure any sort of maybe uh, chronic injury or uh, any soft tissue injury, we can try to heal as quickly as we can. And I'm putting that on Bobby right now. So... Uh, for him to work his magic. But uh, uh, we had a great fall camp. We, we stayed relatively healthy. Uh, we identified who our starting quarterback was, so that was uh, priority number one. Uh, and I'm looking forward to it. I think right now our team is at a place where we need to play somebody else. And we've had three weeks of fall camp, and it's time that we get a compare or evaluate ourselves against someone in a different color jersey. I'll, uh, with that, I'll open up to questions. Into the playbook, would you say you are on on both sides in terms of installation and where you expect this team to be, maybe by the start of uh, conference play? Oh, I, I think we were holding back a little bit. Of course, you don't want to show everything in, in week one. Uh, we can only do so much, or, or what our, our players are, are capable of handling from a mental standpoint. Uh, I, I don't think we, we've tried to really limit our playbook or our plans. Uh, we're, we're trying to be aggressive and in going into it with. You know, every expectations of, of doing everything we can to win the football game uh, on the offensive side, trying to make sure we can put Trey in situations where he can be successful and where he can manage the game and, and uh, understands where his reads are coming from in the run game and, and the pass game. A little bit of a, a change in Trey's, I don't know, uh, approach on the field. Is he acting a little bit more like the starter? Is, has you, have you seen kind of the end of that competition bring a little bit of calmness and a different form of leadership for him? I thought I saw the end of the competition last Monday. I think there was a sigh of relief in the quarterback room. Uh, I had made a statement that it's kind of been the white elephant. Uh, I had been asked. Uh, those kids knew that there was a competition going on at that time. And I think uh, all three of them were relieved that and, and, comf and, and, and good with the decision that was made. And they knew now it was time to start you know, honing in on, on what Butler was going to do defensively and, and make sure that they were all ready to, to win a football game. Different from Trey, though, since that announcement. I think you, less pressure on himself at practice. Uh, I think he's he's making decisions at practice and and, and just cutting it loose. Uh, before I think he was trying to make everything perfect and just like a a, a potential starting quarterback should. Uh, he was trying to be you know precise in everything he did, rather than sometimes it's okay just to tuck it down and take off. Offensive line, do you imagine those are the ten got you'll see eight, nine guys that you hope for at the start of fall camp will play on Saturday? I hope so. We're, we're taking actually 12, uh, and, and I hope we have the ability to play a number of different players. We've had uh, uh, young men, Jalen Sundell has really elevated his play. Cody Mock uh, has, done, has, has had an outstanding fall camp. So uh, I think we feel like we can play seven, eight, nine different offensive linemen. Now there may need to be a reshuffling. Uh, you may see someone jump in at the center position, but uh, that's one of the positives of having three weeks of camp. Uh, you've been able to kind of create some different combinations, uh, getting our best five out there. On the grass now the rest of this week to prepare for this weekend, and how are you kind of approaching all of that? Is Kramer talking to the guys, wearing extra braces or anything, just given playing on a baseball field? Well, we haven't gone that far. We, we have practiced on grass every day, weather permitting, uh, with our three practice fields here on the south side of the shack. So at some point, everyone's been on grass. Uh, a lot of our individual work has been on grass, especially with the D-line and the O-line, just making sure that their footing is appropriate. We've advised our players take multiple pairs of shoes. We're going to probably hopefully attempt to get to the stadium, uh, depending on traffic, a little bit earlier than what we normally would. Uh, twofold, I want our kids to get a chance to see what kind of shoes they want and get out, take your pictures, do your thing, and then let's refocus and eliminate all the distractions. Uh, we will continue to practice on grass uh, the remainder of the week as long as Mother Nature allows. Uh, so tomorrow uh, we will not use the turf field at all. Uh, the, uh, the offense will be uh, completely on the grass field closest to University Avenue and the defense on uh, the grass field farthest away. I'm sorry. Are you going to the stadium on Friday or Saturday? We're going on Saturday. Did I say, if I said Friday, I, I misspoke. So you're not 
altering the MO on road games at this program? No, we, we do what we do. Jeff, we're going to continue to follow that plan. I should mention that our, 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 uh, our specialists have been on dirt uh, probably half dozen times. Uh, Darren Mueller is nice enough to let us use the uh, practice softball field out by their game field. And so a lot of pre-practice, our specialists have been out there just making sure that they understand how the plant foot is different, uh, both in punting and kickoffs and place kicking. So I, I should give kudos to our maintenance staff for getting out there and flattening it out for us to try to make it feel like an infield. That uh, competition at that third linebacker spot, Merck and, and those guys, and how many linebackers do you think will see time with the, the ones? I think we'll probably play anywhere between four and five. Uh, I think it all uh, – right now, Ross, we're doing a lot of things situationally, trying to limit maybe some young kids. The, the, uh, I don't want them to have to know a, a call sheet the size of this piece of paper. I'm trying to give them a smaller package. Uh, I think you could see, uh, like you said, Aaron, Jackson Brown, uh, of course, uh, Jackson Hankey, Jabril Cox, Jazir Cox needs to fit into that role some way, somehow. Uh, Bo Pauly's had an excellent week of practice, so I feel comfortable with him right now kind of being our, our – our 2A, Mike Linebacker. One that job at kicker, is that his job yeah, now? He, he will be the kicker this year. He'll, he'll, he'll handle the kickoff duties and the place kicking. Camp to say we're trusting with him to be the guy. What you, kickoffs, he's done an outstanding job of putting it down the goal line and or near. Uh, being able to – placement is so critical in what we do kickoff coverage-wise. And so he's been able to put it down near the numbers, in the end zone, uh, create some touchbacks or some situations where uh, we can eliminate some returns. Uh, and then he just has a stronger leg right now. Griffin's done an outstanding job. And all of you know Griffin came uh, last January uh, – you know, left early from high school, has done an outstanding job, continues to get stronger. Uh, but right now, you know, uh, we're, we're just, I think we're, we're at, they have the best kicker out there. In previous times, the further you are from the ball at the start of the play, the better chance you have to play early. Any of these young receivers or corners we might expect to see right away? Right now, some of the rec young receivers are working with, uh, down with the ones and twos when they go scout, uh, scout units. So you're, you're seeing uh, DJ Baptist has been down there. Uh, Braylon Henderson has been down there, and uh, Jacob Lippi. All three of them at one time or another have, have spent some time with the ones and twos. Uh, one, just giving us more depth uh, at that position. But I, I completely agree. Uh, guys who are farthest away from the football have a chance to play earlier in their career. Uh, my, my philosophy is probably a little bit different than Coach Kleiman's. Uh, you know, these young kids right now, they're eligible and they're healthy. Uh, I, I think we should play them if they're good enough. Before now, what did you guys see with him to put him at uh, the kick returner spot? Great hands, great decision making. Uh, because of the uh, the fair catch rule, you have to have someone who who understands uh, field spacing. Uh, if he's all the way outside the numbers, you know, last thing we want to do is try to get the ball back to the middle of the field for a return. Let's take the 25 yards. And so uh, I think just experience is probably the number one thing. Uh, he's been there, and he's a big physical kid too. You got to make sure you're ready to wrap him up. Not on the depth chart. Where, where's he at in trying to come back from the foot? Injury? He is uh, right now occasionally in a boot. Then I see him sometimes without the boot. I think it all depends on who's around. Um, but he is, he is doing everything he can uh, to make sure he is uh, available, and I think we'll know more early next week. How full circle is this for you recruiting the Twin Cities to have your first game as a head coach for the Bison in the Twin Cities? I love it. I love it. I, I, we, we've made hay down there. We'll continue to get down there and try to take the very best players out of it. Uh, I, I can just think of, or I, I've had conversations with many of the Minneapolis or metro area players that are on our team, especially the seniors, and you hear the quantity of tickets they're needing. Uh, that's what this game's all about, is, is, is making sure that you know, our fans, you know, North Dakota, northern Minnesota, and the metro area have an opportunity to see, see us play football. Who gets the cake on most tickets? I haven't heard. I know Jack Darnell's been uh, uh, been stressing. I, I've heard Zach Johnson's mother has bought nearly a hundred tickets. So uh, that's just uh, I don't quote me on that, that. That is off the record right there. But that's what I've heard. Something that you're hoping to kind of every couple of years potentially have a game outside of Fargo at a Target Field or at a different venue that kind of showcases NDSU football. I, I would, especially Minneapolis, you would love to. You know, if there was ever an opportunity to play at U.S. Bank or something like that, uh, that would be outstanding. Uh, just one because of the number of alumni we have down there, and I think our uh, it's been proven that our, our our fans travel well, and I'm sure the you know commerce uh, of Minneapolis would love to have us back down sometime. 
Any reminder about the Butler Youngstown game? Have you seen that? Have you referenced that? Do they know about what happened? Oh yeah, we we have about a four minute video uh, on Monday when we started game planning for them. Uh, we cut all the positive uh, plays that Butler uh, had shown uh, on film and uh, showed uh, probably the last two series and then the uh, final field goal to win the game and the celebration. And uh, we made a point that our kids understood that th this, they went to a place where we struggled to win. And we're down two scores and, and, and came back and scored the final 17 points of the game and, and got a big win over a team that had just as recently as 2016 played the national championship game. So uh, by no means are our kids overlooking anybody right now. We're, we're, we're too young to overlook anybody. We got too many new faces. So I think that's helped us a little bit as far as our focus because we have a number of kids who've never played before, so they know they have to be at the best. With such a young team, how do you balance the week to week, trying to win a game this week, but yet looking toward the end of the year and getting better toward the end of the year as you get to the playoffs? How's that? How do you manage that? Right now, we're only talking about one week at a time. I think more of the balance uh, comes in the coaching staff meetings, in, in our staff meetings, uh, trying to make sure that we're getting individuals A, B, and C enough reps maybe with the ones and twos. So when there is an injury or there is a uh, depth issue that they can help us play. But uh, uh, we're going to take 80 kids down there, and so we anticipate being able to use quite a few of them at some point, special teams included. You said earlier that you have a different philosophy than Coach Kleiman on, on the true freshmen I think you were talking yep. about. That, that means you'll play more of them? I, as I, I, I probably am more apt to, to play guys if, if, if they've proven to us that they have the ability to help us right now. Concerned about the four games and managing that and just who can help you? Well, right now, I think we need to identify. I'll use the four-game rule as much as we can, especially as we get into conference season. But I think early we have to identify who can potentially help us over the long haul. New decision makers at center, linebacker, coordinators, you. Um, how has that gone so far this fall? We have tried to put ourselves in as many situations that emulate a football game with a, with a play clock, with a two-minute clock, a four-minute clock, as we possibly can. And uh, uh, that's probably the number one thing that I get concerned about at times is, is just game management. For the last 25 years, I've been someone who suggested ideas to, for game management, and now uh, you know, all eyes come back to me. Uh, I've learned some valuable uh, lessons from Coach Kleiman. Uh, the first one being at Iowa State a couple years ago. We had a delay a game, and he realized that he was supposed to be the guy calling the timeouts. And so uh, I'll, I'll make an effort not to, to, let the, to let the play clock run out. But go ahead. Reviewed final minute procedures, what you're going to do, this and that. We have uh, I had an uh, offensive staff meeting uh, about end of, end of a half, end of a game. Uh, we've emulated some of those things on, on turf. Uh, so that way we can actually go through them because there is a uh, – the call has to get into the game. Uh, you know, the, the play has to be executed. How many timeouts do we have? Where are we at on the field? Uh, there's a whole lot of factors that go into it. So we've tried to do the best we can as far as – and Wednesday we'll probably hit another uh, – 15 or 20 different end of half or game situations. Done in that regard, because Volson, I think, was so good, apparently, as a center, making those calls. He, he's done an excellent job so far. E excited about where Carson's at. Uh, I know he's unbelievably excited, especially being a, a native of North Dakota. This is a huge for him to have an opportunity to represent the state, but also uh, probably live out a dream of his. And he's, he, he is clearly the number one center we have. Uh, his leadership, his work ethic, he's gotten much stronger. Uh, that was one of the things that Tanner had is his athleticism, but how strong he was. Carson's done a great job with Coach uh, Kramer and, and trying to catch up to where we need him to be. You mentioned the possible rotation on the offensive line, but do you feel like Carson is going to take a, a vast majority of the center snaps? I anticipate him taking the majority of the center snaps. To St. John's or St. Thomas coaches about the playing surface down there at all and what to anticipate for Saturday? I did. I talked to Coach Eckendorf down at St. John's. I figured I might as well use a Bison alum. That's where I'll get my best information from. He, he talked about different cleats and some of the uh, uh, choices that their players wish they would have had. And uh, we've notified our players. We've notified our equipment staff. Also talked about uh, you know, noise. Uh, was it a factor? Because uh, they had you know, 30,000 plus fans there. So we we're trying to identify you know, just what issues we may have to go through. And I've probably been uh, a little type A this week trying to think of everything. I know there's probably something that I forgot, but we've had noise uh, this morning. We had it on third downs. Uh, not that it's ever real loud with our offense, but just because we're in a different environment, we want to make sure that they're ready to communicate. 
Matt, that you've been there and you brought the team for that Twins thing, you know, the, the, the pitch and all that. that I, I, think there, I think there's some familiarity with it, but I think once you get there and you see the actual football field, uh, the logo out there, uh, and then, of course, you know, there's no way you can emulate 35 to 40,000 Bison fans. And so uh, I, I think our kids will be excited and, and ready to go. Game. Just, just a couple of the names that, that you've already uh, notified or that you've already said. Between the lines that you can't prepare for, the one or two keys that you'll see on game day that you really want to see happen that you haven't been able to do in practice. I'm not sure yet. You know, I think those are things that that there, there's always different tempos or scenarios that that pop up. Of course, you can't practice every two minute drill out there. Um, you, you hope you, you you pick some general ones that emulate a lot of different scenarios that you can utilize to, to help myself and help our, help our offensive staff and defensive staff get calls in and communicate. Um, it's not only for me when we get into these situations, it's for our team and for our coaches to better handle them on Saturday. Part of some different staffs before, when you have a, a, a whole new group with a new dynamic on headsets and everybody's trying to get in a rhythm on how things go, how long does that take for you guys all kind of get on the same page and how you operate? It takes a little bit of time, and uh, we've tried to shorten that learning curve a little bit. This Wednesday will be our fourth day on headsets uh, during fall camp, and so uh, we've utilized them uh, quite a bit just because there, there needs to be, one, there's some different people in the press box now that might have been last year, two, different voice, different way of communicating things. We just want to try to get through all the hiccups before an actual game. The younger quarterbacks as part of getting offensive play calls in before, how is that going to play out this year? We'll continue to use our, our quarterbacks on the sideline for charting and for signaling in place. Running back, stable, kind of working out. Do you feel like you kind of balance the touches between three or four or maybe feature a guy or two, or how, how is that kind of playing out? Well, I think depending on probably the, the, the menu or the play call that we're going to utilize, I think there could be all the, diff all the backs could be in there at some point. You know, Kobe Johnson's going to travel with us as well. He's a young man that uh, uh, has shown the ability to play at this level. And so we're going to take him, and, and if we need to utilize him, we will. But, uh, uh, you know, with Ty, I, I anticipate us trying to get the ball to him a number of different ways, and he's also going to be on some – uh, kickoff returns as well. So I, I think we want to prevent anyone from having 25 or 30 carries uh, and, and spread those out so we can stay fresh. So you still need clarification on that? You'll check with the referees on? We've had the referees in twice now. Uh, we visited uh, uh, at length on the new uh, no, no two-man wedge on kickoff return, uh, no blindside blocks anymore. Uh, we always continue to discuss uh, – um, blocking below the waist and, and, and where it can and cannot be done. Uh, there is an emphasis on defensive guys cutting this year, so uh, we've had to maybe you know just make sure our kids were aware uh, of all that. And then of course the uh, the targeting uh, has been, uh, w which I think is better. You know, I mean they're they're, they're going to go to the box on all of it and 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 go thoroughly evaluate it.